Hey everybody, it's been a while, but I finally have a strategy guide to review because I finally finished a game. It's sad and pathetic what it's taken me these days. And of course, and it's uh, Gears of War 4. You know, this game came out in November and it's February 2nd. Although to be fair, I did finish it in January and just now getting to the guide review. But anyway, so Gears of War 4. Um, I've already said my thoughts about the game, but that's not really... Uh, reflective upon the guide. Uh, for, for the guide, um, it does a lot of things well. It, um, I was able to find all of the, all 50 collectibles, pretty easy, uh, except for one. There was one that I did mark that was not correctly described and or marked in the book. And it's in, let's see, chapter two of act four. And uh, there's a there's a cog tag in the very beginning. It's right here. So this is page 119 of the uh, standard edition guide. And it says that the cog tag is, there's a corpse at the start of the chapter. The corpse is near a boulder and a fallen tree. Um, so the saying that it's the start near the start of the chapter, that says to me that it's like right when the chapter starts and you're there. You should be looking around. So I was looking around every boulder, every fallen tree, because there were actually a lot of boulders near fallen trees in this area. And it turned out it was further down the road after you come down off of a cliff. And then right there, there is a corpse right there. You can't miss it. Um, so, but I went around for probably a good five, ten minutes trying to find this. Um, so I was, So I was ready just to, you know, skip it and just call it bad and move on but yeah so so that was like the one problem but really in the grand scheme of things like that's not too much of a problem if you if you think about it um i mean one one collectible out of 50. um as for tips like the tips were actually very valuable i shouldn't say actually like oh my god i'm so surprised no but for some some of the the boss fights the uh, especially um the snatcher that one, um, those tips were, were very useful because I was trying to figure out um, what I could do. Because the snatcher was a pain in the butt. Not that it was a difficult thing to fight, but that it kept, um, it, would, it would capture people or capture myself. And if it captured me, I would just have to sit there and wait because I knew that my AI party would never shoot it enough for me to, to come out. Um, I think they did once. <laughs> But, uh, but it gave really good tips on how to stay away from it and how to, um, you know, you know re release your friends because I didn't realize at first that, you know, you had to shoot it because it takes your friends in it. Cause, and then when, you, when it takes one of your friends, it just leaves and that's it. Cause then somebody dies and, and that's over. So, um, gave some pretty good tips. It was also very good at showing like where some of the hidden weapons were. I'm not saying hidden like in the secret doors, but around certain corners maybe you wouldn't have looked. So if you're saying, oh my gosh, I really could use a boom shot or a try shot or something. Uh, this was really good at showing, hey, be sure to go pick up this before you go into the next room because you're really going to need it for this fight. Or if you like this, this is around the corner. Um, so it was fantastic for that. And the other thing was good. Let's see if I can find find areas where it did this because I was noticing it the other day when I was playing with my wonderful friend Drew. I'm trying to think. Because I know it brought up some co-op tips. I can't find it. There's a co-op box for some co-op tips for how you could best, you know, use your friends to either, um, you know, flank an enemy. Where was this? Uh, take, take down a boss more quickly and things like that. I'm not finding it, but I know it was there because because I because I saw it. It was it, it doesn't it's not there very often, but but I de but I definitely saw it. Um, it also gave some tips like for some environmental kills, which was also very useful. Um, probably the worst boss in this game was the carrier, and it gave some really good advice about that about how to stay away from it and how to move quickly and uh what weapons were um, most effective against it of course i really liked fighting the carrier when you get the mech at the end because then i would just kick them it was fantastic i hated those things um 
So, so yeah, it doesn't really give any tips for playing on Insanity, which is, well, I was, probably wasn't going to play on Insanity anyway, since you can't play with um, a team of four. That's probably what, the only way I was able to do it in Gears of War 3, but... So, and there is, there is like the multiplayer setup. I totally admit, I didn't look at any of the multiplayer. Um, and I just haven't, you know, found my, my team to play Horde mode with. But, and it's also that, you know, um, I just, I don't find multiplayer tips that useful in guides. And that's mainly because so many, pa so many patches c come down uh, when... Uh, to, to fix things, to nerf certain weapons, or to uh, balance out some characters, or, or things like that. So, I mean, and there's really not much new to the multiplayer in this. I mean, it, it does explain some of the new stuff, like, like you know, the whole idea of the bounties, and, you know, um, it, the a little bit of what the horde mode 3.0 is and and things like that i mean it does it, it is a good background so one thing i will say about it um is that if you're looking to see maybe what multiplayer mode is best for you um this has really good explanations of exactly what every is uh all the the maps at the time of this that the game came out not any of the dlc maps that have come out since then um you know, and it gives me a pretty good, you know, overviews of of the map of the map in the particular and where where weapons spawns and, and all that. So I mean there's some good tips in there. I'd say this good um overview. If you're looking like, hey, you know, I wanna try something new. What you know, what other mode should should I look at? Because I'm tired of playing, you know, execution. So what else can I try? So there yeah, I mean there's very good at at, at doing that. So but as a whole, I don't have, you know, complaints about this guy except for that one collectible. And it got me through the game. I mean, the game wasn't too tough, but with some of the bosses, I mean, it was very, very valuable with, with that information. Um, it's, I mean, good quality, good writing, um, it's very uh, great screenshots. You could easily see where, what you need to be looking at. Let's see if I want to get that close we need to be looking at to find the collectibles but yeah so that's why I'm giving this one because sorry that one collectible that's gonna kind of, kind of ding ya I give this a four out four out of four point five out of five I cannot speak today so let's see what game I'm going to finish next I have a lot of guides to review <sighs> not starting out 2017 with a good fit but getting through it it's the important thing and hey I finally got Gears of War 4 done so yay, small victories. All right. So thanks so much, guys. Uh, hopefully see you again very soon. Bye.